After those two years, uh, I got my first job uh, acting in a summer theater. Oh, a stock company. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, it kind of went bang, bang, bang along like that for me. Uh, but, like, how, how did you, like, find a niche for it? Like, is this something that you thought of, like, uh, you know, back in the day when you were growing up, uh, just something that you uh, thought, well, hey, you know, well, or, like, was there something that you watched on TV or something that you that got you really into acting? Well, you know, it's funny. I think we all are, are sort of interested in acting on, on one level or another because we only we find actors that we really like and we like to see them play yeah. in movies and stuff. And most of what I had seen had been movies, to tell you the yeah. truth. And uh, when I first started acting, it took me a little while to get used to the fact that, uh, number one, you know, people had to hear you and they had to hear what you were saying because yeah. the play gets carried by the by the language, basically. Yeah. Whereas uh, films can, uh, you can say as much with the look as you can with the lines. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, uh, I, I just kind of, I, I don't know how to tell you, I just got into it. I okay. really, I really liked it. And the singing just kind of started dropping off. Uh, and I did less and less of that yeah. and more and more of the acting. I was going to mention, too, uh, 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 this is a past interview that I've done. I don't know if you get a chance to listen to my show. Uh, I did an interview with uh, Jimmy Valiant, uh, the Boogie Woogie Man. He's a, uh, yeah. he's a professor wrestler. Anyway, uh, or I should say retired professor wrestler. And he said, uh, and he told me that uh, when I did the interview with him, that uh, in one of your movies called Nashville, that he uh, actually owns one of the uh, props or whatever uh, from the movie. Oh, really? Which one did you I think it's like, uh, it's like a car or something like that, or, or some little... Some little prop or some car that he has in a museum or something. Like that. Well, it, it could. Uh, there's plenty of yeah. There's plenty of stuff in that movie. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Uh, like uh, something that the hippie was using or something like that. I don't. I don't even remember. But he. Oh, he could. He could have gotten a tricycle. Yeah, too. I think that's what it was. That's yeah, a tricycle motor, motorcycle was quite. Yeah. Um, oh shoot. Yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the actor. This is stupid. Um, <laughs> Who was who the guy that played the, the, the thing, uh, the, uh, the, the thing about the ant? Um, Are you talking? Oh, come on. Which ant movie, now? Well, it was a... Is this, mm, is this an older, older? Yeah, now it is. It's going to be about 15, 20 years old now. Okay. He, he, I saw him recently, and he looks great. Okay. I asked him if he made a deal with the devil because he looked exactly the same age as he did when we did in Nashville. Okay. Oh, shoot. I'm going to... I'm almost the same as almost coming up. <laughs> it's not quite coming there. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, did, I can see him as well. No, but he rode that. He rode that. Okay. Uh, he was the hippie character. He rode that, okay. tri that, that tricycle. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe if it's something that a person can look up on the internet movie database dot com or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll find him. I, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll find out. Maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll mention it after the interview after I get the information or whatever. <laughs> That's great. That'd be good. Thank okay. you. But I, I just figured I'd let you know that that, that he, he told me that he owns the tricycle as we figured out that uh, yeah. movie, which is kind of unique. Uh, no, very unique. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you were aware of that or or, or what you uh, are aware of after you get done with a movie or whatever, but uh, do you ever get a chance to own, like, any of the uh, props or at all uh, from certain no, movies? You know, funny thing about me, I'm not a saver. And I, I guess I learned very early on in, in, in uh, working as an actor in the theater yeah. that I moved around so much I had to go here from here to there to get a job, and you're always looking for some place to go work. Yeah. And I moved so many times and, and lived so many places that after a while, I, I had a rule of myself. I had a, I had been in the army for six months. I was a reservist, in the, okay. uh, army reservist. I've been in the army, so I had my army duffel bag. If, if if an item would not go into my army duffel bag, I no longer owned it. Okay. So that's the way I traveled <laughs> for about 15, 20 years of my life. Okay. And uh, I'm still a little bit that way. People laugh at me when I go and take a trip. They say, how long are you going to be gone? I said, I don't know, three or four weeks. <laughs> and, and I got an overnight bag, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, yeah, you were talking about the theater and, and uh, whatnot. And, and a lot of people know that uh, theater acting, like in plays, are, are way, way different than do a, a, a movie. I don't know if they're easier or harder, but uh, how long have you been uh, in the theater acting and doing plays and such? Well, I did about uh, I did about 15 years where I ever got involved in film. Okay. And then I did a lot of film work, and then I've done about two two or three years 
lately, uh, over the last 10 years, I've done about two or three year more year, years in the theater. Sure. I think it's a little more difficult. Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, I like both a lot. Uh, I, I feel like you can bring a lot of what you know from acting in the theater to film. Sure. And I'm not sure it, it, it works quite as well the other way. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I, a lot of a lot of really good film actors are really good theater actors. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I think this, I think the theater makes you be a little bit more open. And uh, if you'll notice, sometimes film performances are pretty much subdued. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if they have to be that way. Okay. If that makes any sense. But, uh, like, when you were doing theaters and whatnot, uh, uh, are, are there any uh, certain plays? Because I'll be honest, I, I, I looked up uh, uh, some information about you, and I, I know some, uh, they have some pictures for you from our earlier plays and, and yeah. you know, now. Uh, are there any uh, certain ones that you uh, have enjoyed doing and would do again if you had the chance? <laughs> well... There, the one play that kind of followed me around a little bit, I was first in it when I was 21 years old, and the play was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Okay. And I played uh, the part of Big Daddy. Okay. Which uh, I have since done. I did it once when I was 21 years old. I yeah. did it again when I was 64 years old, and then I did it when I was 65 years old. <laughs> so... Uh, that was that's a wonderful play. Yeah. And it's it's uh, for someone from the south. It's a little the, the language is so good and so uh, the rhythms are so southern okay. that if you feel them and understand them, they're just they're a joy to do. Um, I don't know. If there's many other things that I would really want to do again. Okay. I I like doing something new, like yeah. most everybody. Yeah. I, Shakespeare always. I would. You would always go back to Shakespeare sure. if you had a chance. Um, I never got to play. I only got to play Falstaff once, and it was not in one of his uh, more well-known plays. The yeah. play is called The Merry Wives of Windsor, and supposedly he wrote it simply because Queen Elizabeth loved the character of Falstaff so much. Okay. That they sort of threw this silly little comedy together. Okay. Just to please please the Queen, but uh, <laughs> but I. I, yeah, Shakespeare. There's one play I've been in, but I haven't played uh, the old man in it. Yet. Yeah, is uh, King Lear. Okay, and uh, that's uh, that's an interesting one because uh, it's really hard to do right. Okay, and I don't know whether I could or not. But yeah, uh, it's a difficult play. Okay, well, that's great to to hear that uh, you've had even you as a legendary actor and whatnot. Uh, have had a few favorites that you uh, have enjoyed doing in your career, and uh, now, now talk about your career as a singer, kind of switching guns a little bit. Uh, yeah. uh, about your CD, what what got, what gave you the idea uh, uh, to do a CD? Well, actually, I think it came from uh, my friend Larry Bastian, who's a very well-known country songwriter. Uh, he, he when Garth Brooks was at his heyday, uh, Larry wrote quite a few songs with him and for him. Yeah. He wrote uh, Rodeo, and he wrote uh, Unanswered Prayers, okay. and some of the really big hits that Garth had. And uh, okay. so he and I have been friends for some years because we lived together uh, close to each other in California. We live up in the, in the Sierra Nevadas up above the San Joaquin yeah. Valley. And uh, I had done some, well, not favors for him, things I really enjoyed doing, but he used to get some other songwriters together and we used to do songwriters concerts. And one time we did one, we have a big meadow yeah. up where we lived. And we got about three or 4,000 people out there. And I emceed this concert. And the different uh, songwriters came and sang some of their songs that they had written. And yeah. uh, it was really a, a great evening. And, and these guys were selling their CDs. Well, Larry felt really terrible because I had uh, done the MC <laughs> and uh, I didn't have a CD so yeah. he he started uh, he, he started bothering me but he says you got you, you need a CD I said I don't need a CD I said I said I'm, I'm not gonna do this all the time I said I'll, I'll do it if you ask me to or something like that but yeah. I'm gonna be doing it. so he kind of kept after it and finally one night we were at his place and we used to get together and 
he had a studio kind of place downstairs where we'd get together and sing sometimes after dinner. And we got one night we got to singing hymns and he commented on how well I knew all the hymns. I said, Yes, I said, I did that for years and years. I said, That was all my upbringing. So yeah. that's all he needed to hear. So he, he set the whole thing up. Yeah. And I've got uh, one of his very good friends in Nashville who's an incredible producer and he and this guy, Vico, produced it. And okay. He just told me we we're going to do it and I said, That's I said, sure what the heck. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. <laughs> But I'm awfully glad I did. It's been a real, uh, I know it, it sounds terribly religious yeah. to say this, but it's been a real blessing. Yeah.